YouTube joke here. So it is time. We have got the case marked out. Not sure if you can see that there, but some little drawing marks. I've got my little black dots for points I need to drill. We've got points for our switches. We've got points, you know, the square there's where the pit's gonna go. Pop. All the goodies. This is just a very small selection, of course. But uh, yeah, just to show you, we are here uh, with my friend Eric and his son Bjorn. So we are getting ready to do some grinding and scraping and all kinds of good stuff. So let's do this. Alrighty, so first step is to get, what are these, tap, tap holes? Uh, we're here? using a spring-loaded punch. We're just going to make some divots so that there the drill bits want to bite a little better. Um, yeah, if you want to center your holes, keep everything really as straight as you can. So you basically just give it a couple pops and you can see there's a little divot there. There it is, guys. Um, Check that out. You can do it with a hammer and a punch as well. This one doesn't make as, as deep of a divot, but uh, your drill bit will That'll find it. Work. So we're just going to do these four first and start there. Perfect. Eric is powering up the system. Right, here we go. Time to drill. The, yep, we're going to pop the first hole in the aluminum here with the step bit. slow so we don't warp the metal as much it's aluminum as you can see it's flexing a little bit uh, just go nice and slow there we go there's the main hole there we go one two three let me check the diameter on that but as you can see slow and steady wins the race man Okay, so the first hole is uh, drilled out, and uh, we're, that is for the LED. These are so be, an indicator yep, light. 10 millimeter LEDs. Um, we're going to use a simple circuit to step them down from the full uh, 220 voltage down to an, a voltage that the using a half wave rectifier that the LED uh, can tolerate. So there's the mount for the first LED light. Looks beautiful. Cool. Still just getting going here, but got excited. Check it out. Little power switch, LED indicator light. Beautiful. Popped a hole over there for the LED. Now we got to do the uh, switch there, but that's that's what it's going to look like. Rubber boot covers the outside of these switches, so they're a little bit more uh, liquid safe. But pretty cool, huh? Hey, hey. All right, we've got more holes punched. That's our tester, that's the back stuff I showed you. Or back of the stuff we showed you on this side. Whoop. But yeah, now we're gonna deburr a little bit, you know? You drill it out and it has little burrs there and those are no good, so. Eric's so this is a his... deburring tool. Uh, it's just a handle. This is a little blade on the end and it's on a pivot. So all you basically do is, we got, don't have too much clearance, but you do just basically run it around in the hole and uh, shaves off. This is aluminum, so it's actually pretty easy to do this, but it also works on steel. Um, the other way you can do this is sometimes if you're using a step bit, what I'll do is take the step bit uh, from the back side and just gently push the next ring up against the hole. But as you can see, we pretty much got rid of the, burr the burrs. And, uh, so these little sharp suckers that cut your fingers and yep. space your components out wrong, gone. There you go. There's all the shavings from it, just yep. that little bit. I'm going to say, I've used the deburring tool on uh, copper house plumbing. Sure. And uh, if you're looking for one of these, a lot of times where you'll find them is not in the regular metal fab tools. Where I found this one was in the electrical section because it's actually for the punch out uh, punch out bits they use for electrical conduit and stuff. So if you can't find it in the normal place and the guy at the uh, home improvement store looks at you funny, <laughs> go to the electrical <laughs> section. Deeper and what? That's right. <laughs> so Sweet. All right. And the doctors are ready to operate yet further because now it's time to make the holes for the outlets. Little GFI, that's going to be for the pump. So you see that little, I'm not sure you can see that there. Kind of hard to see because the graphite on. But there's the square for bottom. And there's our round hole. Oop, there we go, that's better. For the, uh, the big, the big outlet. And a chopping we will go, a chopping we will go. So 
we started at the drill press. We have been grinding, we've been measuring, everything is fabulous, and here we are, the rough model. So, check her out. So, power ins. Yep, this will be the uh, 220, this will be the 110. XLR jack for the actual PID temp sensor. Which, thank you everyone on YouTube that recommend putting it on the bottom because definitely went that route. I think it's going to be a world of a uh, world of difference down there. So then we have the main switch. This is a large, uh, looks like a light switch. This is a giant electric motor switch. Can handle up to 600 volts, high amperage. This is what I usually do for turning the mains on. Um, it's what I have in my electric controller. It's worked great. And then and we, we have travel up here. We have pump. Blue for water. Blue yeah, for water. Clever. Yep. <laughs> And uh, this will be the element. So the pit will control the element, um, but this will be in the circuit. So the solid state relay will be below this big heat sink. Inside. Yeah, we'll okay. show the insides when we get it done and wired up. But the solid state relay will be here. We'll use this switch to switch the uh, relay side of it, not the high voltage side, but the 12 volt relay side of it for this. And then when it's on, this LED will pulse off and on as the pit is turning the element off and on. Rock on. And all that power shoots, obviously, up does its magic and then comes out the side here. So we've got, uh, this will be where the um, heating element hooks into, of course. Yep, your three wire 220 outlet, like a, an old style dryer outlet. Yep, yep, which yep. our dryer is set up for, so this is this is perfect. And then? The 110 GFI outlet. Yeah, just to make sure I don't fry myself. Yeah. So yeah, there we are. Rough, we were playing with some polishes there, super shiny. We think we're gonna paint the whole thing. Keep it a nice, a nice color there, but there's that end. And nothing on this side yet. Yeah, Don't nothing on it. this side. There may be a couple screws, the back, the back sides of them for our, um, uh, what is it, the buses? The buses and for maybe the, the, the ground hot, bar. Yeah, the hot and the ground bar. The, it'll be grounded to the chassis just like anything else, so we'll just use a ground bar and then the chat, the uh, bus for the hots. So. And then that's the big old heat sink. I'm sure you can see the fan, you know, the little fins on it. So there we go. There we go, YouTube. Check her out. Fabrication, the chop factor, is uh, pretty much done. May have to do a couple, you know, like I said, maybe a couple screws there, or a couple screws over here for the buses and yep, stuff like that. Yeah, a plate on top of this. Yeah, it plate looks pretty good the way up. it is, but just for cosmetics, we'll probably yeah. do a plate. I'm maybe. actually really thrilled with how these cuts came out. <laughs> This, this, is, this is why you work with someone who knows what they're doing. <laughs> Rock on YouTube. Well, thanks for watching this installment. And uh, yeah, we will uh, continue working on this and uh, should be powered up here. Not too long, so cheers, 17.